On day one, I spawned in as a lava wither. Wow, I'm so little, and I only have four hearts. I can still hover in the air a bit though, and can I? Yes, I can throw flaming wither skulls. Awesome, they don't seem very powerful though. It looked like I was in a town of some sort. All of a sudden, I was attacked by some villagers. One of them threw shears at me. How rude. But I'm keeping the shears. Hey, I know I threw some wither skulls, but I didn't hit anyone. I wasn't doing anything to you. I hurried and flew away, slowly. I wasn't very fast yet. Man, that was mean, but I can't afford to fight right now. I found a little cave and managed to find a corner that seemed safe. Tomorrow, I'll gather some supplies. And with that, I fell asleep. On day two, I woke up feeling refreshed. I better get some supplies so I can build a shelter for myself. I actually liked the cave I was living in, so I decided to stay there. I chopped down some trees and as I hit them, I saw that the trees were catching on fire. Oh, whoops, Smokey the Bear is going to be so mad at me. I'd have to be careful about what I touched since it seemed like I was pretty hot, literally. I had enough wood to make some tools for myself though. They were simple, but they did the trick. Then I almost made myself a nice little nook in the cave, but the pickaxe broke. I went to craft some stone tools and while crafting, the crafting table set on fire. Oh man, I'll have to figure out a solution to this. I noticed that my hunger bar was getting a little low, but I didn't really know what withers like to eat. I guess I would have to go out and try a few things. I flew around the forest and found some mushrooms and other berries. I tried them, but it seemed like withers didn't like mushrooms. Blech, looks like no fungi for this wither. I continued on and saw some animals. Maybe I would like some eggs or chicken. Sorry guys, I ate the raw chicken, but I didn't like that either and it barely refilled my hunger bar. I explored some more, but it started to get dark, so I decided to head home for the night. I'll try looking for some other food tomorrow. Maybe a nice salad? On day three, I went looking around for some plants and grass. I went for the grass, but it only dropped seeds. Then I had the idea to use the shears on it, and voila, I got some dried grass. I decided to eat some dried grass, and finally it refilled my hunger a decent amount. Weird, but whatever does the trick, I guess. As I was eating, I thought I saw something moving behind a tree. Huh? Hello? I didn't hear anything, so I assumed I was alone. I kept eating my dry grass. I went exploring and realized that I was on an island. The water was so clear and beautiful, I wanted to touch it. I reached out, and it hurt me. Oh, I don't think I like water anymore. I mean, I'm literally made of lava, so it makes sense. I made sure to gather up some grass for later. I flew away from the shore. I decided to explore closer to the center of the island. There were lots of trees and bushes. There seemed to be a mountain in the middle of the island. Wait, no, it was a volcano. Oh, wow. I flew a little closer to the lower part of the volcano and realized there was some lava inside. Ooh, that feels nice. All of a sudden, some lava spewed up at me, hitting me out of the air. Ouch. I quickly flew away and headed back to my cave for the night. On days four to five, I left the cave to go exploring some more. I realized later that someone was following me. I wasn't sure what it was, but I could see it darting away when I wasn't looking. I decided to hide behind some rocks and then pop out at it. It came around the rock and I scared it. Ah! Ah! It was just a little butterfly. Hey, what are you doing following me? I'm not. Okay, sure. I kept going and waited again for the butterfly to come around the bend of a rock. You are following me. Admit it. Fine, I am. But I need your help. Huh? Me? What can I help with? You need to keep the island from exploding. Uh, what? The butterfly sighed and flew away anxiously. The island has been shaking and there have been small lava explosions. The town wise woman said that the island is going to be destroyed with a huge explosion. But it can be prevented by a hero. Me? The town summoned you and you came. But one villager and his family were opposed to the whole thing. And he's the one that attacked you. Rude. Right? Anyway, you're our only hope. Why me? Um, I assume it's because you're made of lava? That would make sense, but I have no idea how to do that. I need to talk to the village wise woman. Agreed. The butterfly, who called herself Vanessa, led the way. On days six to eight, we arrived back at the village. We saw a few people around, but not many. Those are the people who attacked you, Bruce and his son Bobby. Vanessa pointed out some villagers outside with some pitchforks. They were arguing with some of the other villagers. Here, I know how to get to the wise woman's house. Vanessa led me around the back of some houses when we arrived at a home with a bell hanging outside. Nice. I've been expecting you, young hero. I flipped around to see a wise old woman with a basket of various dry grass on the table next to her. I assume you are hungry. Yes, thank you. She welcomed us in and she made Vanessa some tea. You want to know how to defeat the volcano? <laughs> well, I don't even believe that I can. I'm so small. You can. You just have a few steps to take. She brought out what looked like an orb. I knew that the volcano would erupt someday. The villagers turned to me to help, and I gave them a solution, but some would not listen. They will seek you out to hurt you. They believe you are evil and have ill intent. Huh? Why would they think I'm evil? Some withers are, but that is a choice, young friend. You choose your path, and for the sake of our island, I hope you choose wisely. The orb suddenly started to glow, and I saw a figure inside. It looked like me, but bigger and stronger. Wow. 
You can gain the ability to control the lava and tame the volcano, but it will take time. You will need to complete tasks in order to become the hero we so desperately need. What do I need to do? Only you will be able to know. The volcano will speak to you. Huh? Speak to me? Interesting. It had gotten late, so the woman invited us to spend the night. On days 9 to 10, Vanessa and I woke up and went outside to collect some food from the old woman. Before we left, the wise woman said that in the vision, she also saw our struggles with setting things on fire. That's when she tossed out a cobblestone crafting table. Just what we need, thanks. Vanessa started to fly away. I need to take care of some things, but you should go see what Bobby, one of the villagers, is doing. I went ahead, and that's when I noticed a villager, who I assumed was Bobby, was outside among the other townsfolk. He looked angry. Then all of a sudden, he jabbed his pitchfork at an innocent villager. Defend them. Where did that voice come from? I decided to listen to it. Hey, leave them alone! I dashed over to help the villager and stop Bobby. Get back, you devil! We don't want you here! Bobby tried to stab at me, but I moved out of the way. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to save the island. Just please stop hurting people. Bobby looks surprised. You're not going to eat us? Ew, gross! I mean, no, why would I do that? Bobby looked shocked and he lowered his pitchfork. My father has been telling everyone that withers are evil and can never be trusted. They feed on the souls of men. Well, I definitely don't. I just like grass. Bobby seemed confused, but also relieved. He looked at me and nodded. I will follow you, Tiny Wither. I know that I had my doubts, but you seem like you really care about our people and our island. And I did. I knew they were just trying to make their way in the world like me. We could all live together in harmony. Just then, Bobby's father, Bruce, ran out of the house with a pitchfork. He ran towards me, but Bobby blocked him. Dad, don't hurt him. He's just trying to help. Get out of the way, boy. You don't know what you're talking about. Then Bruce jabbed his pitchfork at Bobby. Defend them. Hey, leave them alone. I spun towards Bruce, pushing him away. As I did, I threw one of my tiny little flaming wither skulls at him. It wasn't much, but it did a little bit of damage. It also gave him some wither effect. You see? He's an evil creature. He will only cause pain and misery wherever he goes. I am not evil. The only evil here is you. And with that, threw another flaming wither skull. It didn't take Bruce out, but it did bring him down. Stop him. Make sure he doesn't hurt our friend again. Bobby smiled at me and chained Bruce up, took his pitchforks, and took him off to the jail. I'll come for you, Wither. You won't succeed in your evil plan. Bobby came back over as Vanessa flew back as well. Thank you... Zozo. Zozo. Thank you, Zozo. You are a welcome friend. All of a sudden, I felt a power surge through me, and I leveled up into a slightly bigger Wither. I had more hearts, and my flaming Wither Skull seemed more powerful too. Then I heard the ethereal voice again. Well done, Zozo. I looked around, but I didn't see where it came from. Wow, neat. Vanessa flew around me and did a little happy dance? I don't know, but it looked fun. Wow, that was amazing. Thanks. Now let's see what my new Wither Skulls can do. I launched some skulls and saw that they did more damage than before. There was more room to grow, but this was definitely a good start. I felt amazing. I also felt a warmth in my heart. I think the voice I heard was the volcano calling to me. I defended the people, and it was happy. On days 11 to 12, Bobby helped me build a house in the village. Well, it was more like a nice cave in the side of a rock, since I would burn wood if I touched it. We figured that I should stay close. Vanessa flew in and saw that I was making a new home, and informed me that while she was gone before, she had decorated my old cave. And now that I was building a new place to live, she was sad I wouldn't be using her improvements. I told her not to worry, as I planned on bringing everything she had done in the old base to this new one. She seemed to like that and did her little happy dance. As I made my way to the cave, I noticed some spiders outside of it. They weren't too much of a threat, and I took them out easily. Easy peasy. I ate a bit of grass while looking at the new entrance of the cave, and one of the small spiders jumped up behind me and tried to bite me. I took it out with one hit. I went in and gathered my things, but before I could grab all of them, a huge spider dropped down from the ceiling. Aw, oh, gross! Who you call gross, you three-headed freak? Hey, that's not very nice. The spider lunged at me and I dodged around him. I was able to use my fireballs, but he kept getting hits in. I didn't think I could defeat him, but I managed to take him down. Phew, that was close. I guess I wasn't as strong as I thought. I still had a long ways to go before confronting the volcano. I gathered the rest of my things and headed back to the village. On days 13 to 15, I made my way back to my new cave. On the way, I noticed a small alcove and decided to mine out some materials. I found some cobblestone, iron, clay, blackstone, diorite, and of course, some flowers. Perfect, I can make these into better tools and armor. I can also use them to upgrade my base. I made my way back to the village with my new materials, excited about what I had found. When I got back, some of the houses were on fire. Vanessa flew up to me. Zozo, the volcano erupted. It was just a small one, but some fireballs fell down from the sky and burned up some houses. I looked around and knew I needed to help. 
Bobby threw an empty bucket at me, and I hurried to the ocean to help take out the fire with the water bucket. Since I wasn't touching the water directly, I was fine and didn't get hurt. I asked Bobby to come with me, and we mined out some more stone. We needed to fireproof the houses, just in case. We helped the villagers make some improvements to their homes so they wouldn't catch fire again. It was hard work, but we all felt a little safer afterwards. Except I didn't get why the volcano was telling me to do things and then attacking people. There had to be some sort of explanation. While I thought about that, I decided to finish up my cave home by adding all of the things I had gotten from my old base. I also used some of the materials I had mined earlier. And last of all, I smelted down the iron so that I could craft some better tools and armor. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to the voice again. Be strong for them. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I needed to find out. I went to the wise woman again and told her that the volcano had spoken to me. I also told her I didn't understand why it would attack the villagers. To answer that question, you must talk to Bruce. Bruce? The guy that tried to hurt me? Precisely. I didn't understand why, but I'm sure I would figure it out. Subscribe. Subscribe? Well, I guess if the volcano said it, then it's pretty important. I made my way out of the house into the jail cell where Bruce was being kept. I need to talk to you, Bruce. Never. <laughs> he spit at me. Why do you hate me so much? He ignored me. I guess I could try again later. I headed out and went to find Bobby and Vanessa. I told them all about the volcano speaking to me and about Bruce. Bobby didn't seem surprised. My dad doesn't really talk that much. It would take a miracle to find out what he knows. Great. Off to a strong start. I got back to my cave and made some better upgrades to my house. I even built Vanessa a little nook to stay in. She seemed to really like it. Thanks, Cezo. You're awesome. She really did know how to put a smile on my faces. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with that same voice in my head. Be strong for them. Huh? Can you at least tell me how? Silence. Great. I got up and decided to go out to the beachfront to look for some things and gather supplies. It was beautiful, but I had learned my lesson about water. Just then, a huge crab came out and tried to snatch me. Luckily, I was made of lava and I burnt him. Ouch, that's rude. I wanted to eat you. Trust me, you don't want to eat me. The crab looked at me, confused. You're not a shrimp with three heads? No, I'm a lava wither. Zozo, to be exact. A lava wither? Haven't seen one of those since the last one was summoned. Wait, there was another one? Huh? When? The crab clicked his claws for a minute and thought. Probably like 40 years ago. Something like that. That was a small thing then. This was new information. Thanks, you've been a big help. I would say thanks to you, but you're not a shrimp, so I'm even hungrier. And with that, the crab skittered away. What a weird guy. We had almost forgotten why we came to the beach, but then remembered and picked up some more sand. On days 23 to 26, I headed back to the village and started smelting the sand. Vanessa and Bobby came to say good morning. I told Bobby and Vanessa about what I learned from the crab. Another wither was summoned? I wonder why nobody ever mentioned it. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. I decided to talk to the wise woman again. She would have been around then, so she must know something. I confronted her and she sighed. I had hoped that Bruce would have told you, but I suppose I must. She grabbed her orb again and I saw images flash across it. About 40 years ago, two young men in the village decided to play with magic. They had read about withers and decided that they wanted to summon one. They grabbed the items required from a weird magical room. They went about it correctly, but there are always risks. Once the wither was summoned, using magma blocks and wither skulls, it befriended the two young men. They kept it secret for a long time, but the wither wanted to be free. The boys promised that they would let him go, but they never did. The wither grew bitter and despised humans, especially the ones who had summoned him. One day, he managed to break free from its bonds. There was an argument between the three, but the wither had had enough. He attacked the village and the two young men. Let me guess. Bruce was one of those young men. The other died trying to save Bruce's life. His name was Marcus. So what happened to the wither? It laid the village to ruins, destroying most, and then escaped, taking captivity in the volcano. It grew over time and now inhabits it. It seeks revenge on all humans, but it's been biding its time. So it's not the volcano that is attacking people. It's the wither living inside. The old woman nodded. But the spirit of the volcano has been battling with it for many years. It has grown weak, nearly on the brink of collapse. That is why we need you, Zozo. You must restore the volcano and defeat the wither corrupting it. That was a lot to process. This wither had been growing for over 40 years. How could a small wither like me stand against something so powerful? On days 27 to 31, I woke up and knew where I needed to go. I went to Bruce and told him what I had learned. He looked tired today, not as angry. I know what I did was wrong. I messed with power that I had no right to use. I wanted something special, and I treated it like garbage. It's all my fault that this is happening, but I can't fix it. He seemed so sad, but I knew what I needed to say. That's why I'm here. I will protect you. All of you. 
Bruce looked at me and he smiled. I owe you my life, Zozo. Thank you. I unlocked the gate and let Bruce out of the jail. He couldn't embrace me, so he bowed a little bit instead. I will follow you, little Wither. You are our strength. Just then, I felt another surge of power, and I leveled up into a bigger Wither. I was now adult size. I felt that calm again, and then I heard the voice. Well done, Zozo. I was on the right path. Now, I just needed to prepare. On days 32 to 35, I tested out my new abilities. I could shoot bigger fireballs and could even fly faster. Bobby heard the explosion and came to take a look at what was happening. He was impressed. Bobby gave some materials and helped to set up an obstacle course with some targets to train with. We had to keep some water on hand though, so I wouldn't burn up all the trees. Careful, Zozo. I'm trying. I just have no idea what to expect. I'll be fighting another wither and I'm not even sure what tricks he has up his sleeve. Just then I saw Bruce. He came over and decided to help me out too. He showed me how to do the crawling exercise. I was too big for it, so I just flew over the obstacle. Bruce was not impressed. He then showed me how to aim my shots with some target practice. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I had hit the target, but Bruce suddenly drew his bow at me. He started shooting, and I successfully dodged some arrows, but some hit me. When he stopped, he told me he was trying to teach me how to dodge. You could have given me a heads up first, but hey, thanks for your help. No problem, Zozo. Anything for you. Anything? Um, within reason. Good to know. He smiled and we all headed back to the village for some food. When we got there, there was a commotion at the center square. What's going on? A small eruption came up out of the ground and swallowed a house. We looked and indeed, there was a large spot where the house should have been. Instead, there was a pool of lava. Was anyone inside? No, thank goodness, but it's not safe here. The villagers all argued until Bruce hushed them. We will take care of this. We will fortify the village and take precautions. The villagers seemed a little at ease, but still scared. I was going to give it my all to protect these people. I just needed to know what to do next. On days 36 to 39, I waited for the voice of the volcano to guide me. There wasn't anything, and I felt a little bit frustrated. Why aren't you talking to me? Nothing. I decided that I would just wait, patiently, or at least try to. Bruce and I helped to further fortify the village. He threw us some materials, and we made some cobblestone walls. As we were doing so, Bruce brought up another idea. Hey Zozo, we want to build a statue in your honor. Also, as a reminder of hope, do you have anything in mind? I thought for a minute and then told Bruce what I would like. He smiled. That sounds perfect. We gathered the needed supplies and started to clear a spot for the statue. We built part of the base and hoped to get it all done in a few days. Can you tell what it is? On days 40 to 43, we went out to explore the island. I guess I had some other things I needed to do before the volcano would speak to me again. We went looking around the volcano when something caught my eye. It was a large cave. I went in and saw that there were some diamonds. I quickly mined them all up along with some other materials. With this, I can make some diamond armor. Neat! I noticed some lava running through a part of the tunnel and wondered if that's how the houses were being swallowed up. I tried to create some barriers just in case. It felt so nice and warm, I decided to take a break and enjoy the lava. Just then, I felt something grab me from behind. I managed to squirm around and saw a giant squid was dragging me into the water. I wasn't burning him because his tentacles were wet, so I was helpless. Oh no! He swam into the water, pulling me with him. When I touched the water, I solidified and was basically useless. I tried to gurgle to make him stop, but he kept swimming further and further down. I saw my hearts dropping and thought this was the end. Just then, the squid released me into an alcove. Out of the water, I transformed back into a lava wither. My warm heart was enough to melt the stone back into lava. Hey, there you go, friend. I have saved you. Huh? Saved me? You almost destroyed me. The squid looked confused. Wait, you're not Lily. No, who's Lily? My daughter. Huh? I looked around and saw some axolotls coming up to me. That's not her, Paul. You need to stop snatching people. I looked at the axolotl and she looked at me. There was absolutely no resemblance. Sorry about Paul. He is Lily's friend and she disappeared a few days ago. We think she might have been kidnapped by the other clan of axolotls. They live nearby, but their keep is protected by a shark. Well, it sounds like you need help. I'll go look for her and bring her back to you. Really? Wow, that is so kind of you. Here, you will probably need this. The axolotl gave me a diving suit. I guess that solved the problem of me not being able to go into the water. Off onto another adventure. On days 44 to 49, Paul guided us close to the rival axolotl clan. He suddenly stopped and told us he saw the blue axolotl somewhere around here one time, but not sure exactly where. We thanked him anyway. I was close to the surface and took a look to see where I was. I recognized the area. I was next to the dry grass field. This was a great opportunity to use the diamonds I got, so I crafted a diamond sword, pickaxe, and shovel. That's when the crafting table caught on fire. Ah, not this again. 
The bench broke before we could craft all of the diamonds. Darn it. Well, at least I got some tools. Better than nothing, I guess. That's when I noticed a nice looking lagoon. Inside of it, I spotted a cave. It seemed empty, so I made my way underwater to take a look. Inside the cave, I thought I could see the axolotls hiding in there. Just then, I was attacked by a shark. Hey, I'm just trying to save Lily. The shark didn't respond. He kept attacking me. Luckily, I had crafted a new sword, so I was able to take him out pretty quickly. I swam up to the cave and emerged from the water onto a dry area. The axolotls looked terrified of me. I just want to take Lily back home. One larger blue axolotl moved forward. Lily is where she belongs. She loves me and wants to stay here. Huh? I didn't see Lily anywhere, so I really didn't trust this guy. Then I heard a voice. Help! I'm in here! That must have been Lily. Her own choice, huh? The blue axolotl jumped at me and attacked. The other axolotls backed away, clearly frightened. I was able to take down the leader quickly, and the other axolotls thanked me. Thank you, stranger. We've been captive to Blake for far too long. He wouldn't let us out, and he kidnapped Lily as a way to start a war with the pink axolotls. Why? He was obsessed with Lily for months and wanted to marry her, but she said no. Then a few days ago, he captured her. Well, you're all safe now. I went around the corner and found Lily trapped in a cave. I freed her and we all left the lagoon. I knew what I had to do. On days 50 to 53, I went back to the alcove of the pink axolotls with the blue axolotls and explained the situation. They made a truce and Lily's mom was more than happy to have her daughter home. We owe you a great debt, Zozo. Take this as a token of our gratitude. Then Lily's mom gave me a huge stash of diamonds. Wow, wow thank you. Of course, if what I heard is true, you are embarking on a great quest to save our island. You will need it more than we do. I thanked them again and then started the long journey back home. On days 54 to 57, I heard the voice of the volcano speak to me. Sacrifice for them. Sacrifice? Huh? I could do that. I just needed to figure out how. I quickly made myself an armor stand and hung my diving suit up. As I got to town, I noticed that the wise woman was outside looking at the sky. Huh? Welcome back, Zozo. You have been gone for a long while. I got mistaken for an axolotl and ended up saving the kidnapped daughter and joining the clans together. Hmm, yes, as I expected. I looked at her. She was still looking at the sky. She was an odd one, she was. Another two houses have collapsed while you've been gone. We did our best, but the wither grows angry. He is nearly on the brink of taking over the volcano. I was really worried. Maybe the villagers could leave the island and find refuge somewhere else. I suggested it to the wise woman. We don't run away from our problems, Sozo. Not run away, just stay somewhere else. We are safer here with you. Huh? I turned and saw Bruce and Bobby approaching me. Are you sure? Yes, young friend. All will be well soon enough. We all looked at the sky together for a minute. Then Bobby leaned over and whispered to me. What are we looking at? We slowly backed away as the wise woman continued to look at the sky. We went and gathered some more supplies so we could continue to work on the statue. It was basically done, we just needed a few finishing touches. We also built some new houses and made sure that the foundations were solid. We also built them over the water in hopes that the other wither would be less likely to attack them. The wither would try to take us down, but we would prevail. On days 58 to 62, I woke up to Vanessa flying around nervously. What's wrong, Vanessa? I think there's a storm coming, Zozo. Look! I looked outside and sure enough, it started to rain. I guess I could try to walk around in my diving suit, but it would definitely make me slower. I don't think I should go outside. I can't either. One raindrop could really hurt me badly. I hadn't thought about that, but it made sense that Vanessa was pretty fragile. Her wings were paper thin. It's okay though, we can have a day in. We can play a game. Vanessa flew around me excitedly. We ended up playing some games and she shared stories of her family. Where are they now? I'm not sure exactly. They all migrated when I was still little. My wing was hurt, so I couldn't go with them. That made me really sad. So they abandoned you? Vanessa landed. Her wings drooped a little bit. It's okay, Vanessa. I won't abandon you. I promise. Her wings lifted a little bit, and she fluttered around again. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. Sacrifice for them. I sighed. I'm trying. Bobby and Bruce eventually came over looking for us. We explained the situation and they helped build a little overhang so we could travel to and from the village safely. I was really grateful and made some food for everyone. A little while later, I took the diamonds I had been given and made myself some nicer armor. Wow, this stuff was amazing. I could take on anything with this. On day 63 to 66, I went out to go test my new armor. I went out to the jungle area where I hadn't been before. Maybe I could find some more food items. I was getting a little bit low on dried grass and only had five peas left. Vanessa had told me about something called chocolate, and it didn't sound half bad. I would go looking for some cocoa beans. I was foraging through the trees when I entered a clearing. It looked like there was something written in the ground. Huh? It was that thing that the volcano had said to me. Be sure to listen to that little voice in your head telling you to subscribe. 
I started gathering some dried grass when all of a sudden I heard some loud screaming. I didn't see anyone around me, but then I realized it was coming from the sky. The volcano was spewing fireballs. I hurried and dodged around them, but one hit me. It was small, but it was enough to knock me over. Apparently, these fireballs are extremely hot since they set me on fire. What is this magic? I'm not supposed to burn. Another fireball hit me. <laughs> Ouch, stop that. What's the matter? Can't take a little heat? I looked around but didn't see anyone. It sounded like the voice of the volcano, but much harsher. Hello? Small little wither, you are nothing, but I can make you great. I assumed it was the wither inhabiting the volcano. I'm not listening to you. Why not? We are, after all, brothers. I'm not your brother. You are a bully, preying on the innocent. Innocent? They captured me. They kept me as a pet. I knew I was destined for more. I had my revenge with the power I possessed, but I am so much more now. The time will come when I obtain all the power of the volcano, and then I will truly have my revenge. What they did was wrong, but they're sorry. You don't need to blow up the entire island because you're mad. The voice screamed and fireballs rained down around me. I tried to dodge, but I couldn't handle all of it. A fireball hit me and everything went black. On days 67 to 70, I woke up in darkness. After a minute, my body lit up the space and I realized I was buried. Uh -oh. oh great, now I have to dig my way out. I started using my tools to chip away at the hardened lava. It took a few minutes, but I was finally able to free myself. The clearing I had been in was now just a large pool of lava. Good thing I was made of the stuff, otherwise I would have been trapped. I flew over the hot magma and started to make my way back to the village. If the wither had thrown this big of a tantrum here, I'm sure he did some damage to the village. When I arrived, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I realized the wither must have used up all his strength trying to hurt me. I was relieved. Just then, I saw Bobby running up to meet me. Zozo, come quick! Huh? I followed after him into his house. What's wrong? It's my dad. I can't find him anywhere. I thought for a minute, then something dawned on me. He must have gone to talk with the wither in the volcano. That's the only thing I can think of. Bobby looked sick to his stomach. He doesn't need to do that. He probably feels responsible, but don't worry, Bobby. I'll go find him. I hurried and flew back to my cave to gather some supplies. On my way out, I noticed Bobby was waiting for me with a pack on his back. I'm coming with you. It's too dangerous, Bobby. It's my dad. I have to do something. He was right. I wouldn't want to stay behind either. He will probably go back to where it all started, on the desolate side of the island. Then that's where we'll go. On day 71 to 74, we went tromping through the island slowly. Bobby couldn't fly like me, but I wanted to keep a low profile anyways. We mostly traveled in the jungle and gathered food as we went. Hey, more cocoa beans! I totally forgot to make chocolate when I was in the village. I'll have to do that when I get back. Sacrifice for them. Huh? Sacrifice what? The cocoa beans? I think the volcano was losing it. We kept traveling and came upon a small pond. We made a small shelter and decided to stay there for the night. Bobby couldn't really sleep because he was so worried about his dad. It's okay, Bobby. We'll find him. I sure hope so. It was quiet for a while, but then out of nowhere came some more spiders. Ah, gross! Bobby helped me fight them off, and in no time, they were all gone. Now I really won't be able to sleep. I'll keep watch. Don't worry. Bobby nodded and then managed to eventually fall asleep. I hoped I could keep my promise to him. He really needed his dad, and I didn't want to see him lose him. On days 75 to 78, we kept trekking through the jungle. I could tell that Bobby was really tired, but he kept pushing through. We came to a large cliffside and realized that we needed to climb up it. We started to ascend, but then the island started to shake. Zozo! The island kept shaking, and then suddenly the cliffside split. Bobby fell halfway into the cliff and managed to hold onto a ledge. I looked down and noticed Bobby was barely holding on. I went to grab him, but remembered I would burn him. Uh -oh. Zozo, move! I maneuvered around them and managed to get to the ledge. Then I mined some blocks and created a safe path for Bobby to get back to safety. Wow, that was intense. You're telling me. We waited for a minute, just in case there was another earthquake. I hope the villagers are okay. I'm sure it's fine. I wasn't too sure, but I had to be hopeful. I need a break and some water. I nodded and let him rest for a bit. We decided to make camp and I made a small shelter. We set up a fire and Bobby was able to fall asleep right away. Having a near-death experience will do that to you. On day 79 to 84, we trekked further down the side of the volcano. We finally made it to the bottom and just as expected, there was a barren wasteland. Everything was dried up and dusty. Bobby looked around in awe. This is... Empty? Sad. I nodded in agreement. So much destruction and pain. It needed to be healed and restored to the way it once was. 
We started to make our way through, but then Bobby was attacked by some snakes. Ouch! He stabbed them with his pitchfork, but more were getting bites in. Hey, stop it! I threw fireballs at them and managed to take them out, but Bobby looked pretty bad. You okay, buddy? I think I've been poisoned. I need some medicine. It's in my bag. He managed to grab some and take it. The wilderness is not kind to you, my friend. Bobby laughed. No, it is not. After this, I'm never leaving home again. His laugh got quiet. I wonder how my dad is doing with all of this. You're weak. I'll go get you some food. Where? I looked around. Touché. Instead, I located a large dead branch and severed part of it off. I gave it to Bobby to use as a crutch. Thanks. We slowly but surely made our way further into the wasteland. On days 85 to 89, Bobby and I arrived at what looked like the remnants of the village. Some of the stones were still there, but there wasn't much. This must be it. My dad has got to be close by. Bobby threw down his crutch and went scrambling around the ruins. I went looking around, but didn't see much. Then I noticed something shining across the land. Huh? I flew toward it and saw a metal-looking container buried in the ground. I unearthed it and discovered it was a cage. Bobby came up beside me. Is that... It's where I kept it. Huh? We both flipped around to see Bruce emerging from a small hole in the ground. It was partially hidden by a rock, which is why we didn't notice it in the first place. Bruce approached us and touched the side of the cage. It's where I kept Aiden, the other wither. Bruce seemed really upset, and he started to cry. I've made so many mistakes. All of this is my fault. I need to fix what I broke. Not like this, Dad. Don't sacrifice yourself. You only give him what he wants. Bruce didn't say much else, but we followed him into a small cave. We stayed there for a while to rest up while I devised a plan. On days 90 to 94, I woke up to Bobby yelling at Bruce. Huh? It's not your responsibility. Yes, it is. Don't try to stop me, Bobby. I'm doing this for you, for all of you. What about Zozo? He promised he would help us and he will. I can't let someone innocent pay for my mistakes. Not anymore. Sacrifice for them. I knew what I needed to do. Bruce went back to his room in a huff, and I came up to Bobby. I know what I have to do. Just promise that you won't follow me, and make sure your dad stays here. Is this goodbye, Zozo? No, I'll be back. Don't you worry. Bobby nodded, and then went up to the opening of his dad's room. We lured Bruce towards the cage, telling him that we found something interesting in there. When Bruce wasn't looking, we pulled him inside the cage and locked the door. He looked stunned. This is for your own good, Bruce. Don't follow me. He sat there and begged me. Please, Zozo. It's okay, Bruce. It's what I'm supposed to do. On days 95 to 97, I continued flying toward the volcano. It spewed lava here and there, but I dodged past it. When I was a good distance away, I stopped and hovered. Aiden, I've come to talk to you. The voice I heard before let out an ugly scream and spewed more lava at me. You dare to call me what that monster named me? I'm here to take his place, Aiden. I know you hate him, but he needs to live. Take me instead. I saw the lava spew out further, almost hitting me. Why would you sacrifice yourself for such measly humans? Because it's the right thing to do. The voice laughed. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. I moved closer to the volcano to see if I could spot Aiden. Suddenly, the volcano reached out and snatched me, pulling me into its burning embrace. Everything went black. On day 98, I woke up inside the lava. I heard the voice of the volcano. Well done, Zozo. I felt a powerful surge run through me, and I burst from the ground into the air. I leveled up into a full-sized wither. But then I felt a different kind of power. It was much bigger and stronger than me. I realized I could control the volcano. I focused my energy and forced Aiden to fly out. He was out of the volcano, but the fight wasn't over. He was as big as I was, probably stronger. But what choice did I have? I flew toward him, spewing lava and shooting wither heads. He fired wither heads back at me, but at long last, one of my wither skulls knocked Aiden down. On day 99, I approached Aiden. He looked like a normal wither like me, but he shook with anger. How dare you! That was my home! You have no right to use all that power for evil. This ends here, Aiden. I commanded the lava to burst up and around him and solidify to his body, caging him in. He was stuck, and he knew it. Let me go! I have to make them pay! They're all evil and can't change. They don't deserve to live. You're wrong, Aiden. And with that, I slashed at Aiden and defeated him. Thank you, my friend. You have proven yourself worthy of my power. The volcano spoke to my mind, and I felt a stronger connection with it. I was now its guardian. If I stayed worthy of it, it felt right. On day 100, I freed Bruce and told him the good news. He followed me and Bobby back to the village, where we all lived happily and safely. 
the people celebrated, and I finally made some chocolate chip cookies. We also finished the last part of the statue, and it looked awesome. Everything was right on the island, finally. <laughs>